I'm here today to speak on our stewardship of vocations. Particularly, I want to target the men of our parish around my age that, well, let's just say we aren't kids anymore. When we talk of vocations, usually two things come to mind. The younger guys that are entering the priesthood, or for those of us that are a little bit older, becoming a deacon. Well, today I'd like to speak to the fact that God is calling all of us to serve him, and the fact that vocation just might look different to all of us. You see, it doesn't matter our age or where we are in our lives when the Lord calls us to serve him, but what's important is that we recognize and act on whatever that calling is. For those that don't know me, my name is Jeff Stonick. My short bio is that I am a convert to Catholicism, and that conversion ignited in me a powerful love for Christ that made me want to share that love with others. At the same time, it started my own vocation journey. That journey ultimately led to me answering God's call to serve as a deacon where I'm about halfway through formation. I'm not going to bore anyone with the details of my own path, but I'd like to share is maybe some of the ways God is calling you right now and what you can do about it. First of all, don't think that this call is limited to just the clergy. A, a calling to the deacon is, is a major commitment, but it is one that is desperately needed in this time when we are in a shortage of priests. But lay ministry in the parish is also vital, and there's always plenty of places that need our help. We all have different talents that we have developed in our professional lives and careers that translate into something that can be used to serve God. Before entering formation, I was fortunate enough to participate in a few different ministries, all of which helped shape my faith positively to where I am now. So how do we know when God's calling us and how do we discern his will? I want you to think back to when you were little. What was your dream for your life? You know, I think we all started out dreaming that we were going to be something big, to be a hero and change the world. As we got older, those big dreams kind of took more practical forms, but what didn't change was God's love for us and that desire in our heart to do something to make the world a better place. A lot of us that are in this stage of life have already been called to the vocation of marriage and family. That vocation started with love, the love for your spouse, and then continuing on to the love of your kids. The vocation that God continues to call us to begins with love as well. But it's God's love for us, and it's with love that he is constantly speaking to us to do, to do something with, important with our lives, to give him our lives. And it's in that way that we are called to be holy. So how is this call to a vocation different than a career or an occupation or even different than the call to marriage and family? We are told in the book of John that you did not choose me, but I chose you. Through free will, we chose to do those other things, but God knows the purpose of your life and has chosen for us a particular path to serve him. What's the thing that we were asked when we were little? What do you want to be when you grow up? Well, in this case, I think it's better to ask, what does Jesus want from me? You see, Jesus knows what life we've led. He knows what he created in each of us, and therefore he knows the path that will be best for our salvation. I discovered all this later in life, and really after not living the not-so-virtuous life. I know there's a lot of people that were surprised by the change in my life and the path that I'm currently on, but trust me, nobody is more surprised than me. So no matter how holy you might think you are, or not, the Lord knows what's in your heart, and he knows that it is good. Take it from me, you don't have to be a paragon of virtue in order to hear God. Okay, so maybe you've already started to hear God's call, or maybe hearing all this has started you thinking about it. What now? Well, I'll give you the steps that I think are vital in this process. These steps aren't necessarily in order, nor are they to be taken as a task checklist to be marked off as you complete each step. Sometimes more than one is going on, and there's always more work that we can do with each one. First, Know that you were created with purpose. The Lord knew you before you were born. We were all created for a specific mission, and that's what he wants us to see. Jesus loves us so much that while he alone is Savior, he's inviting us to help him by sharing his work of salvation. 
Second, accept that love. And what is his choice for us? Obviously, you can't proceed from this step without accepting what has been chosen for you. I went into this stage looking for reasons to not be a deacon. But everything led to what appears to be that choice. I am also open to that it still might not be the right choice. And I gladly will accept whatever else it was that I was meant to do. Again, we're listening for God's choice. If we try to force it, it'll leave us short of our true calling. Also, we are receiving our vocation regardless of our path, both good and bad. We only need to give it our all. Third, listen. Start by developing a fruitful personal prayer life. Go to Mass regularly. Partake in the, in the sacraments, as all of them are liturgical prayers. Learn to do the Liturgy of the Hours. Go to Holy Hour. Go to Adoration. Get rid of the noise. TV, social media, video games, all that stuff contributes to clutter your thoughts. God is constantly calling all of us to give our lives to him, but to fulfill your call, your vocation, and your salvation. So be ready to listen. Fourth, cooperate, or another way to put it, get over yourself. The past often hurts, whether it was our own doing or something that was done to us. Reconciliation and forgiveness of others and of ourselves is a must in order to move forward and accept love. To do this takes strength, and that strength also helps us fight fear. There's a ton of things legit and made up that we can be afraid of. For me, it was the fear of giving too much of myself, fear of giving too much of my time, fear of public speaking, and the fear that I won't be happy serving God. But the big one was, and sometimes still is, fear that I'm just not good enough. So what's the most used line in the Bible? Be not afraid. Start with the small fears, and before you know it, those fears will be replaced with the love of the Lord, and you can tackle anything. Five, be holy. It starts with our prayer life, but we also need to be virtuous and practice asceticism. Limiting those things that tempt us and reining in the things that we either waste our time with or place too high a priority on also takes away the time that is required to listen to God. I'm not saying you have to live like a hermit, but Take inventory on the things that you spend your money and precious time in pursuit of and honestly ask if in the end it really enriches you. Is it something that will bring real value, not just to you, but to your family? Finally, number six, distinguish the voices that are talking to you in this process. We've already covered the voice of the Lord in his calling you, the voice of yourself and your own desires, the voice of the world and the things that distract us. But the biggest voice to be wary of, it's the voice of the devil. This will be the strongest voice because not only does he not want to lose you to Jesus, he can't allow another holy person to be allied against him. He will use all the negatives that I've covered to bring you to sin and lead a less than perfect life with the ultimate goal of making you turn your back to God. Seeking spiritual direction is a must to help us listen to the, cor to the correct voice. My spiritual director has both challenged me and set me at ease on many things. I was also very lucky to have, and still have, a, a mentor, a wonderful mentor, who's a permanent deacon that fostered my initial discernment and encourages me to stay on the right path. So I'm going to finish with one last thing here. Because we are guys and we have to ask this one important question, what's in it for me? Well, let me tell you what I've gotten out of it. So far, it's pretty simple. Happiness and fulfillment, which has made me a better man and a better father. Like I said, God knows what your best life looks like. He knows what it'll take to bring out your talents and ministry to serve others that will in turn bring to you that happiness and fulfillment. But most importantly, your salvation. So, the bottom line is, Jesus Christ is calling you to holiness, and he wants to help you get there. To quote Pope Benedict XVI, be not afraid to love Christ. Thank you, and God bless you.